Uh, welcome to uh, How I Met Your Deployment Plan. How's everyone's afternoon going? Yeah? Okay. I don't have a demo, so no worries there. I won't uh, keep you any here, here any longer than I have to. All right, so a bit about me. Um, as Chris said, my name is Gareth. Uh, my social media information for Blue Sky, Mastodon, and the other site can be found at the bottom of every slide. Uh, if anyone's interested in tweeting, or sorry, don't use that word, interested in posting at or about me during, uh, during or uh, after the talk. Uh, so until recently, I was a software engineer uh, working on the Sol project. Um, it's a story based on the classic tale. Company V buys company S, company B buys company V, uh, and hilarity ensues. Uh, you may have seen it in the news recently. If you don't get that joke, sorry. It's, a, it's kind of a broad joke. A couple laughs. It's complicated. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I was fortunate enough to spend my days working on open source software. Uh, if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend it. I'm almost also a former DevOps engineer, um, so if anyone is interested in doing a group therapy session outside on being on call, I will lead that. Uh, I'm also a vegetarian, um, but I'm not a militant vegetarian, uh, so if I see you eating meat, I will only silently judge you in my mind. Um, I'm also owned by two cats and a dog. So if anyone has any tips on working from home with pets, um, please come find me. Uh, in another life, uh, I was part of a team that organized and started a free and open source uh, conference here in Southern California. Uh, some of you may, may be there now. Because of my involvement in, in, the, in the conference, uh, I, had a, I have a unique understanding of all the work that goes into um, hosting a conference, um, and they know all the craziness going on, craziness that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, for a fun story, ask me about the time a very large, expensive IBM server got lost at the LA Convention Center, and I almost ended up going to the Grammys. Uh, if you haven't thanked the organizers of both Scale and DevOps Days LA, please do so. Uh, just a quick warning, uh, so no one gets upset uh, during the talk. Uh, this is a talk on deployments, uh, so I'm going to talk about deployments, uh, and we're going to get to scenes and characters and whatnot of How I Met Your Mother, but that's later. This is a mullet talk, uh, so business up front, party in the back. Uh, and a quick spoiler alert, uh, this presentation contains information on the characters and the storyline, as well as scenes from the TV series which aired from September 19th, 2005 to March 31st, 2014 for a total of nine seasons. So if anyone has not seen this sign and you're concerned about spoilers, you're welcome to leave the presentation now. Uh, since we're gonna talk about deployment plans, uh, we should probably define what we mean by a deployment or what I mean by a deployment. Uh, for the context of this presentation, a deployment refers to the process of making a software application or system available for use. It involves taking the code, configuration, or any necessary resources and setting them in a live environment where users can access the application or system. Uh, deployments can vary widely depending on the context, such as deploying a website to a web server, deploying a mobile app to an app store, or deploying a machine learning model to a production environment. The goal of a deployment is to ensure that the plan, sorry, that the software is available and reliable and performing as expected for users. So now that we've defined what a deployment is, we can define what a deployment plan is. And a deployment plan is just that, a plan. A document or documents that includes all the details required for a deployment of, of a deployment or deployments to happen. And it should be a living document, one that is updated following each deployment or copied from a template, updated with relevant information for that particular deployment. If you haven't documented how your deployments happen, then much like Indiana Jones, four and five, or a fourth Superman movie starring Christopher Reeve, your deployment done, plan doesn't exist. When someone new is going through, your, through the steps of your deployment plan for the first time, they shouldn't feel like they have to re retrace someone's drunken escapades involving tropical fruit, 
because it contains a valuable clue to the next step in the plan. Your deployment plan should include easy to follow steps that will guide someone along the process for, for, for performing the deployment. A new hire should be able to deploy into any environment with minimal assistance, even if something goes wrong. Common problems should be documented in the deployment plan along with the action to take if those problems are encountered. If, the problems, if those problems are related to the software being deployed, perhaps include links to the issues as reminders that those problems should be fixed before the next deployment happens. If the new hire runs into, into a problem that is not documented, that is a perfect opportunity to update the deployment plan for the future. And your deployment plan should be easy to find, stored in whatever documentation system your organization is using, whatever that might be, wiki software, Google Docs, or stored in a Git repo alongside the application source code. Anyone in the organization should be able to easily find and review the details of your deployments, both past and future. Throughout the series, there is a long-running joke about the details of the job of one of the main characters, Barney Stenson. When asked by his friends what exactly he does, his standard response is always a single word, please. We later learn in one of the final episodes that please is actually an acronym, an acronym whose meaning and purpose is only known to Barney and a few others. When thinking about the contents of your deployment plans, avoid using acronyms and terms only a few select individuals know. Ensure all terms are clear and obvious in their meaning. And when we're thinking about the, the contents of our deployment plans, we want to think of the five W's and the H. The what, the who, the why, the where, the how, and of course the when. The what is what is being deployed. This could be a single change to a website, making a new version of an application available to be downloaded, or a large deployment involving multiple pieces being deployed to multiple locations, along with the database updates, firewall changes, and load balancer updates. The details of the what should be easily discoverable. If there are version numbers, make sure those are easy to find and include them in the deployment plan so that everyone knows what version is being deployed. Details about the what are useful to include when, when a summary of the deployment is sent out, commonly called release notes or a change log. Next up, we have the who. <coughs> when thinking about the deployment plan, it's important to both identify who is involved as well as who will be affected. You'll need to identify any and all collaborators. Depending on the scope of the deployment, this could mean include members of other teams that manage things like databases, networking devices, or security. Their involvement and expect expected tasks should be well documented. You'll also want to think about the users that will be affected by the deployment. You want to make sure that they are aware that the deployment is happening, as well as kept informed of any changes and new features that are rolling out. Keeping the users happy keeps them excited about using your software. Part of the deployment plan should also include the reasoning of why this deployment is happening, partly to ensure that everyone is on the same page about why the change is happening, but also the information will be useful when alerting users about the deployment explaining what was deployed and why. The reason could be something, could be some, could be because of a bug fix, a security fix, or a new feature. The why should also be included in the post-deployment summary. And a very important detail to include in the deployment plan is where the deployment is happening. Is this a production deployment or is the change being deployed to a staging or QA environment? If you're lucky, those are completely separate environments. Is your software being deployed to a cloud provider? If your organization uses multiple cloud providers, which one is the deployment going to? Is this going to a particular region? Or is it going to a local data center? If your organization has multiple data centers, is this deployment going to all of them, or are you doing an initial deployment to one location first? The where could also determine additional involvement from other teams. If this is a staging or QA environment, your team may have access to perform certain tasks that they otherwise would not if this deployment was going to a production environment. Ideally, you're using the same deployment plan and methods in all environments to stay consistent, but also to continue to, to, test, the, to test the deployment before it's time to deploy to production. Probably the most important detail to include in the deployment is how the deployment is going to happen. This would mention any tools, scripts, and commands, as well as how they are used for the deployment. 
We should also include the name or name, name of the team or team members next to each step. This detail is useful for everyone involved so they know who is responsible for specific parts of the deployment. For the purpose of this talk, including the how in the deployment plan is important, but the details of what the how is not. I'm not here to tell you how to deploy your software. I don't know what your software is or what it does or what your environments look like. There are many, many solutions available. Solutions like Pulumi or Dagger exist. Using continuous integration and continuous delivery solutions like GitHub Actions, GitLab Runners, or CircleCI is an option. Your team should pick the option that works best for your organization's needs. And I'm sure there are many, many vendors here at scale and DevOps LA that will tell you that their solution is the best one to use. Even if, if that solution is a handful of simple, simple shell scripts that deploy into the appropriate environment, details of those shell scripts should be included in the deployment plan, and those shell scripts should be included, should be stored in some sort of source control system and not on an engineer's laptop. Along with the steps and commands of how the deployment would happen, it is important to include information on how to test the deployment once it is complete. This will ensure that everyone is working as expected. Everything is working as expected. As new features and changes are made, the documented tests should be updated to ensure that all features are covered by the deployment test cases. The final detail from the five W's and one H that we need to include is when specifically when the deployment will happen. The details of when will vary from plan to plan, but most often the when will include a date when the deployment is expected to happen and a time when the deployment will begin. And if you're feeling brave, an, es an estimated time when the deployment should finish. Some common questions that come up when talking about when to deploy. Is this a peak usage time for users? Is this going to cause downtime? How much downtime right now is acceptable? How many of those imaginary nines did somebody promise? Should we deploy on Friday at 5 p.m.? Like most things in tech, there are a lot of opinions. This is one of the most contentious topics that is often debated when talking about deployments of software. Fights have broken out, friendships and marriages have ended. If you've never participated in an argument on social media about the best day and time for a deployment or even observed one in passing, Consider yourself lucky. If you ever see one starting up, perhaps just cho close that social media app for the day and go in search of pictures of kittens and puppies using your search engine of choice. Similar to the details of how a deployment is performed, for the purpose of this presentation, including the when in the deployment plan is important, but the details are not. The time when you're doing your deployment should be when it makes sense for your organization, your team, and your users. When thinking about the when for your deployments, it's important to consider the start time as well, as well as the expected end time, taking past deployments into account to estimate the time frame. Drawing advice from this quote from one of the main characters, Ted Mosby. Nothing good happens after 2 a.m. When 2 a.m. rolls around, just go home and go to sleep because the decisions you make after 2 a.m. are the wrong decisions. Once the deployment has concluded, hopefully at a reasonable time, and any testing that indicated that the deployment was successful. Some, some next steps include alerting your, alerting your users that the system or software to a, is available and publishing the release notes or change logs to the appropriate channels so everyone is aware of the changes and new features. And then celebrating a successful release, with or without a goat, your choice. Following the celebration, it's important to schedule a post-mortem to discuss what went well with the deployment and what areas could use some improvement. This is also a good time to update the deployment plan with any necessary changes from the last release. While not directly related to How I Met Your Mother, on the topic of postmortems, I gave a talk at DevOps Days LA a few years ago on postmortems in general and what a postmortem on the Death Star might look like. It seemed like it was well received. DevRel luminary Mary Thingval author of The Business Value of Developer Relations and Amateur Unboxing Photographer, referred to the presentation as critically acclaimed. <laughs> An open source community expert, Jonah Bacon, author of People Powered and Art of Community, and the creator of the heavy, me heavy metal polka fusion music genre, referred to the talk as an arresting performance. 
If anyone is interested in hearing more about my thoughts on postmortems, uh, come find me in the hallway track. So the TV series, How I Met Your Mother, has five main characters. Barney Stenson, Robin Shabatsky, Ted Mosby, Lily Aldrin, and Marshall Erickson. We're gonna talk about these characters and look at what kind of deployments they might use. The first character we'll talk about is Marshall Erickson. Marshall is known for his kind and optimistic nature, often serving as the moral compass of the group. He's fiercely loyal to his friends, particularly his wife, Lily, and his best friend, Ted. He's known for his quirky sense of humor and his love for puns. Marshall is also a romantic at heart, often expressing his love for Lily in grand and heartfelt gestures. Marshall is a lawyer with a strong sense of justice, passionate about environmental issues, and often taking, on, taking a stand for causes he believes in. Despite his career ambitions, Marshall's true happiness comes from his relationship with his friends and family. Throughout the series, Marshall's personality is seen as steady and reliable, even when his relationship with Lily takes a brief pause while she moves to San Francisco to pursue her art career. Marshall is seen as supportive and waits for her to return. Considering this, a blue-green deployment would likely be the deployment that Marshall would pick. A blue-green deployment is a strategy for deploying applications with minimal downtime and risk. In this approach, you have two identical environments, typically called blue and green. At any given time, the only, only one of these environments is live and serving production traffic, while the other is inactive. When you need to deploy a new version of your application, you deploy it into the inactive environment. In, in, in this case, it's green. Once the deployment is complete and the green environment is tested and ready, you can switch the router or load balancer to direct traffic to the green environment instead of the blue one. Using this approach, you can ensure that your application is always available since one environment is always active. And you can easily roll back to the previous version by switching your router or load balancer back to the blue environment if any issues are detected in the green environment. Marshall is known for his consistent and dependable nature. Likewise, the blue-green deployment strategy aims to provide a consistent and reliable way to deploy applications while minimizing downtime. Marshall is someone you can always count on, much like how the blue-green deployment strategy is designed to ensure that your application remains available and reliable during deployments. Marshall's presence often serves as a safety net for his friends, just as the blue-green deployment strategy provides a safety net for applications by allowing quick rollback to a stable version if issues arise. Marshall's careful and thoughtful approach to decisions mirror the low-risk nature of blue-green deployments, which minimize the, list, the risk of downtime or errors during the deployment process. Both Marshall Erickson's personality and the blue-green de deployment strategy emphasize stability, reliability, and minimizing risk, making them comparable in their respective domains. The next character is Robin Shabatsky. Robin is known for her love of guns, scotch whiskey, and cigars, as well as her affinity for playing ice hockey and her passion for journalism. Depicted as having a somewhat guarded and reserved demeanor, Robin often struggles to open up emotionally to others. Despite this, she forms close relationships with the main characters in the show and is seen to be fiercely loyal to her friends. Throughout the series, Robin na navigates various romantic relationships, including an on-again, off-again relationship with fellow character Ted. One of Robin's defining characteristics is her ambition and determination to succeed in her career. She's shown to be career focused and often prioritizing her work over her personal life. Despite, having, despite facing challenges and setbacks in her career, Robin remains resilient and determined to achieve her goals. Looking at Robin's career journey across the nine seasons of the series, the type of deployment that would most likely go with would be a canary deployment. A canary deployment is a technique used in software development and release processes to reduce the risk associated with deploying new versions of an application. In a canary deployment, the new version of the software is gradually rolled out to a small set of users or servers before being deployed to, a, to the entire infrastructure. This subset of users or servers is often referred to as the canary group. By monitoring the performance and behavior of the canary group, developers can quickly identify any issues or bugs in the new version of the software it, before, it is being deployed, before it is deployed to the entire user base. If any problems are detected, the deployment can be halted and the necessary fixes can be made. 
This approach helps to minimize the impact of issues and ensures a smoother rollout of the new version of the software. Canary deployments are often used in conjunction with other deployment techniques such as blue-green deployments to further reduce risk and ensure a high level of reliability and availability for the application. Robin's career is categorized by her ambitious and determined nature. She is constantly seeking new challenges and opportunities. To, to advance her field, much like how Canary deployments aim to push the boundaries of software development by introducing new features or improvements. Robin's career often experiences various ups and downs, similar to the incremental rollout of Canary deployments. Just as Canary deployments allow developers to test new features, for the small set of users before a full rollout, Robin often faces small setbacks or challenges in her career that allow her to learn and grow before moving on to bigger opportunities. Robin's career journey reflects the iterative nature of Canary deployments. As she progresses in her career, she gains new skills and experiences that allow her to take on more significant roles and responsibilities. Much like how Canary deployments gradually improve the overall performance and reliability of software over time. The next character is Lily Aldrin. Lily is incredibly caring and often takes on a maternal role within her friend group. She is always there to offer support and advice and comfort to her friends, especially when they are going through tough times. She is an artist and has a passion for painting. Her artistic side is a significant part of her career, and she often expresses herself through her artwork. She has a playful and sometimes quirky personality, and enjoys having fun with her friends and is known for her sense of humor and adventurous spirit. Despite her nurturing nature, Lily is also strong-willed and can be quite opinionated. She is not afraid to speak her mind and stand up for what she believes in. Lily's character undergoes significant growth through the series, particularly in terms of her career. She starts off as a kindergarten teacher, but later pursues other career opportunities, including work in the art world. A deployment plan that would likely line, align with Lily would be the incremental deployment. An incremental deployment, sometimes known as a rolling deployment, is a strategy for releasing software updates in stages rather than all at once. This approach allows developers to mitigate risks, monitor the impact of changes, and gather feedback before a full deployment. When performing an initial and incremental deployment, updates and changes can be broken down into smaller manageable pieces. During the incremental deployment, developers can closely monitor the status and performance of the update. This can, now, this can also gather, they can also gather feedback from users to identify any issues or improvements. Assuming the initial deployment is successful, additional updates and changes can be gradually rolled out. The incremental deployment strategy helps to reduce the risk and widespread improvements by catching problems early on and allows for iterative improvements based on feedback. Lily's personality is often portrayed as nurturing and is characterized by her caring, supportive, and sometimes overprotective nature towards her family and friends. She often goes out of her way to ensure their well-being and happiness, sometimes taking on a motherly role within the group. There are parallels that can be drawn between Lily's personality and the concept of incremental deployments. Just as Lily cares for, her, for the well-being of her friends, incremental deployments, deployment strategies prioritize the well-being of the software by minimizing the risk of potential issues and ensuring a smoother rollout. Similar to how Lily's nurturing, nurturing nature involves over time, incremental deployment strategies involve a gradual progression from a small scale release to a full deployment, allowing for adjustments and improvements along the way. Lily often adjusts her, her approach based on feedback from her friends. Likewise, incremental deployment strategies rely on feedback from users and monitoring, monitoring performance metrics to make adjustments and improvements for the software update. Lily's protective nature can be seen as a way to mitigate risks and prevent harm to her friends. In a similar way, incremental deployments, incremental deployment strategies aim to mitigate risks associated with software updates by catching issues early on and minimizing their risk. The next character is Ted Mosby. Ted is an architect in New York City with a romantic and often idealistic outlook on life. He's portrayed as a kind, thoughtful, and sensitive individual who is deeply committed to finding true love and settling down. Ted is depicted as a hopeless romantic, constantly searching for the one, 
and often jumping into relationships with, with high hopes, only to be disappointed. When we first meet Ted during the first episode, he has, professes his love to Robin on their first date. He's known for his long, elaborate speeches about love and relationships, as well as his tendency to overthink and analyze his romantic endeavors. Ted is also shown to be a loyal friend, always there for his close-knit group of friends, despite their quirks and flaws. He's particularly close to his best friend Marshall and Marshall's wife Lily, whom he has known since college. Ted's search for love is a central theme of the show as he narrates the story on how he met his children's mother to them in the year 2030. If Ted was to pick a deployment plan, he likely would start with a more monolithic approach. A traditional monolithic deployment approach refers to the method of deploying software applications where the entire application is developed, built, and deployed as a single cohesive unit. In a monolithic architecture, all components of the application, such as the user interface, business logic, and data access layers, are tightly coupled and then tightly coupled and packaged together. The entire application is then deployed on a single server or set of servers. Updates and changes to the application can require deploying the entire application, which can lead to error, to longer deployment times and increased risk of error. Scaling a monolithic application can also be challenging, as the entire, app, entire application needs to be replicated to handle increased load. Just like Ted's journey to find the one spans over several seasons, a monolithic deployment approach often involves a long and complex process of developing, testing, and deploying a large application. In both cases, there's a focus on a single large entity. For Ted, it's finding a lifelong partner. And for monolithic deployments, it's building and deploying a single unified application package. Ted often becomes fixated on finding a specific type of person or relationship, which can limit his options. A monolithic approach can limit flexibility in, de in deployments as all components are tightly coupled and must be deployed together. As Ted's preferences and circumstances change, his search for love becomes more challenging. In a monolithic deployment, making changes to one part of the application can be difficult without affecting other parts. Ted's relationships often face challenges and sometimes end in failure. A monolithic deployment approach can be risky as a failure in one part of the application can impact the entire deployment. As Ted's search for love evolves, he matures and learns more about himself. Likewise, a monolithic approach, a mo monolithic deployment approach can face scalability challenges as the application grows and evolves, requiring more resources and effort to maintain. Just as Ted's search for love eventually leads him to finding the right partner, software development often evolves from monolithic de deployments to a more modern approach for greater flexibility and scalability. The final character is Barney Stenson. Barney is incredibly charming and, co and confident, often using his charisma to win over others and get what he wants. He's known for his smooth talking ways and his ability to manipulate situations to his advantage. He's always impeccably dressed in a suit and tie, which has become his trademark, believing that wearing a suit makes him more attractive and successful. Despite his many flaws, Barney is a loyal friend, often providing comedic relief and moral support showing that beneath his suave exterior, he cares deeply for his friends. Barney's, Barney Stinson's adventurous lifestyle would likely lead him to favor more of a Big Bang deployment strategy. He might not, we may not know all the details of Barney's Big Bang deployment, but one thing we do know for certain, it's going to be legendary. A Big Bang deployment strategy is a software implementation approach where a new system or software version is rolled out to all users at once, replacing the current deployment entirely. In this approach, there is no gradual phasing in of new versions or a coexistence with an old version. Instead, the switch to the new version is instantaneous, often occurring over a short period of time, such as a single day or weekend. Big Bang deployments are typically used for smaller projects or when the risk of deployments or the risks of deployment are considered low. This strategy can be more straightforward. I can't read what that says. 10 minutes, okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, this strategy can be more straightforward and faster to execute compared to phased or incremental deployments, but it also carries higher risks. If something goes wrong during the deployment, it can impact all users simultaneously, potentially causing whole widespread disruption. 
as a, as a, result, as a result, through testing and contingency plans, thorough conting, testing and contingency, plan, contingency plans are crucial when using a Big Bang deployment strategy. Both Barney and the Big Bang deployment strategy require a bold approach. Barney often takes, takes risks and embraces new challenges. Likewise, a Big Bang deployment strategy involves a, bold, involves a bold decision to switch to a new system or software version without a gradual transition. Barney's lifestyle is categorized by quick decisions and rapid changes. While the Big Bang deployment strategy aims to implement the new system or software version quickly over a short period of time. Barney's adventurous lifestyle can lead to memorable experiences and changes in his life, while a Big Bang deployment strategy can lead to major changes in an organization's systems and processes. While both approaches involve risk, the consequences of failure can be more severe in a Big Bang deployment strategy. A failed deployment can lead to widespread disruption and impact all users simultaneously. Mm. Whereas Barney's adventures typically have a more personal consequence. Uh, so some takeaways. So this is the portion of the talk that is most important if you just walked in and need some talking points for your boss to justify to send you to DevOps Day LA. Also known as the too long didn't watch portion of the talk. So some of these items were mentioned during the talk and others were not, but all of them will be on your final exam, which is worth 90% of your grade. At a, bare, at a bare minimum, document the how, the what, and the where details to ensure that anyone is able to easily perform a deployment. Include the why, who, and when details where it's helpful. Consider deployment plans as living documents, updating them where necessary after each deployment and make sure that the deployment plan is easy to find and easy to follow. The best way to keep your deployment plans up to date is to use them across all environments. Assuming your organization has staging or pre-production environments, using the same deployment plan in those environments ensures that all issues, any issues, can be caught early before attempting to deploy to a production environment. Over the show's nine seasons, the characters of How I Met Your Mother evolved and changed. Likewise, the deployment plans are going to evolve and change. Each time a deployment process, each time a deployment happens, it's an opportunity to update and update the process and be more efficient and fix problems that might arise. You may initially begin with a monolithic deployment, but move to a blue-green or canary deployment plan, or a combination of the two. Use a deployment plan that works for your organization and your environments, not someone else's. If you're, if you're doing your deployment at 5 p.m. on a Friday, doesn't work for your organization or your team, don't deploy at 5 p.m. on a Friday. When attending talks and conferences, it can be easy to get drawn into the excitement when watching presentations on new tools and methods, instilling a desire to rip everything out Monday morning and replace it with a new shiny solution. Take the messages in these, in these presentations as inspiration for small changes you can make not mandate so that you need to duplicate the presented solution entirely. The final takeaway is a tip, for here, tip here for your time at scale, assuming you're here for the whole weekend. A three or four day conference, if you were here yesterday, is exhausting. My advice is to stay hydrated with your beverage of choice. But please clean, heed Chloe's warning here and learn from my mistake. And if someone offers you a Key Lime LaCroix, Avoid it at all costs. A big thank you to the DevOps Days LA organizers for allowing me to speak this afternoon. Thank you.